Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. This segment today is called Wicked Wednesday. If you didn't know, Wednesday is the new release for new comics that come out every week. These are my recommendations for the best books to pick up on Wednesday. I will also name one book to be the speculation pick of the week. Comic publishers are stepping up their game for your entertainment value. So let's get right into it. Our friends at DC Comics has given us Rebirth number one, which is going to a second print. Retailers really underestimated this how important and how popular Rebirth would be. So their orders were very low. So everything's going to a second print. This issue is your setup for the rest of Rebirth. So you should read this title before you read any other titles so everything makes sense. Next up is Green Lanterns number one. This is part one of a new story arc called Red Planet. The new Lanterns here are Jessica Cruz and Simon Bass. These characters are pretty new. So we're just getting really introduced to them here. If you're feeling this and you really like this, you should pick up this sexy variant shown right here. I like this direction that the Green Lantern property is going into. Next up is Superman number one. This is the start of a new storyline called The Son of Superman, chapter one, The Last Son of Krypton. It's now been established that Superman has a son and he must decide will he help him with his abilities or will he hide it from the world? Peter J. Tamazi returns as the writer. He did an incredible job back in the New 52, so I'm glad he's still around for Rebirth. Even if you don't read Superman comics, you should be picking this up for nostalgia. He is an absolute American icon. Next up is Titans number one. This version is composed of Donna Troy, Arsenal, Garth, Liveth, and Nightwing. There's a pretty cool variant for this, which looks like an Avengers pose, doesn't it? Or is it just me? Next up is Batman and the Dark Knight Crusade number one. Remember, it is law that there must be a Batman title in every weekly pull. This book is a one shot that's outside the continuity of Rebirth. It has events that are taking place before the Dark Knight returned. It includes the Joker, Poison the Ivy, Selina Cow, AKA Catwoman, and the Last Robin. It's written by comics icon Frank Miller with pencils by John Romita Jr. Nothing makes the cash register ring quite like a Frank Miller Batman story. It's just like Jay-Z putting out an album. It's gonna go platinum because it's Jay-Z. And this is gonna sell 100,000 copies because it's Frank Miller writing Batman. You don't need to know anything else beyond that. Next up is our speculation pick of the week. And guess what, more Batman. If there's a question, the answer is always Batman. If you want extra credit on your test, the answer is still Batman. So here we are with Batman number one. This is some incredible history, folks, because this is only the third time that Batman has ever been restarted at number one. That includes the first issue, number one, released in 1940, shown here. It's the first appearance of the Joker and Catwoman in the same issue, and a high-grade copy is more valuable than your house in near-mint status. The second Batman reboot was from 2011 in the New 52. This book is the first appearance of Lincoln March. And despite a high print run of 188,000 copies, this book is still selling for about $200 on eBay and 9.8 graded. So that brings us to Batman number one, volume three from 2016. This is gonna sell it fast. So if you didn't get your comic book store to hold this for you, you better get there very early on Wednesday morning. DC is going to exploit this and put out a thousand trillion billion different type of variants. It's up to you to decide which one you'd like to pick up. Now, if you're a novice, you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, didn't a Batman number one just come out two weeks ago? And that is correct. However, it was the Rebirth Batman, which was a one shot. What we're talking about today is the ongoing series. Got it now? Okay, cool. And I would advise you to get at least one copy of something of Batman number one, or you will regret it later. Next up, let's see what Marvel is up to. And that will be Civil War part two, number two. The primary characters in this is gonna be Iron Man versus Captain Marvel. The regular cover looks good, but Marvel has brought in Jim Steranko to do a variant cover. Steranko got famous in the late 1960s as the writer and artist of Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., turning it real shagadelic. Next up is Deadpool number 14. This is going to be a tie-in to Civil War II, and his mercs for money are getting to the fray. They're completely unwanted, but they're going to get in anyway because that's the Deadpool way. Deadpool is a pickup every month without question. Next up is Empress number two, which is going to a second print. And I like that cover. This is by writer Mark Millar, who's famous for Secret Service Kingsman, Kick-Ass, Old Man Logan, and the original Civil War back in 2006. Retailers went too light on this miniseries. Now issue number one and issue number two have gone to a second print. 
Next up is Gwenpool number one, which is going to a second print. This was on my not recommended list because I think it's a fad. I still feel the same way about this title. Expect to see it in dollar bins in about 12 to 18 months. Do not get a lot of money tied up into this title. There are much better things to speculate on. And it ain't this. Next up is The Punisher number one. And this reboot is going to a second print and I would recommend it. His depiction in Daredevil season two has been flawless. I absolutely love it. And it's bringing renewed interest back into the Punisher character after they overused him in the 1990s. Next up is Uncanny X-Men number eight. This is a continuation of the Apocalypse Wars. And I'll tell you what, a great cover sure can sell a comic book. And that's the case here with Psylocke attacking Phantom X. That is wicked awesome. Next up is Star Wars Han Solo number one. Finally, they're giving Han Solo his own miniseries. With the popularity of the character, I'm surprised they're just getting around to this. Seriously, what were they waiting on? There will be a million variants of this, but the one you wanna pick up is gonna be the Han Solo encased in carbonite action figure variant, which is a recreation of that famous scene in The Empire Strikes Back. At the time I was making this video, this was selling for about $10 shipped on eBay. And I think that's a very fair price. Next up is my report on independent comics and small publishers. First up is Rough Riders number one from Aftershock Comics going to a second print. This is the story of some famous people in history doing some fictional events. They're led by Teddy Roosevelt, but it also includes a story with Annie Oakley, Jack Johnson the boxer, Harry Houdini, and Thomas Edison as well, in which they team up for an adventure in Cuba. Next up is Life, Death, and Sorcery number one from Chapter House Comics. It's promising a mix of drama, humor, and magic. The advanced critical response has been positive. If you like magic-based comics, then this is a good pickup for you. It's worth a try. Next up is Hip Hop Family Tree number 10 from Fantagraphics. This comic series is critically acclaimed for retelling the early days of the hip hop movement in comic book form. On the cover, they're highlighting Cap One, who's a famous graffiti artist also included in this issue is the early days of Public Enemy when they were radio announcers, DJs, and radio personalities. Next up are selections from the world's biggest independent comic publisher, Image Comics. First up is Lazarus number 22 from Greg Rucka. That is the writer who's also moonlighting at DC Comics. He's the new writer for Wonder Woman. I've been talking about Lazarus nonstop since I started this channel. Like the Hunger Games, it's a strong female protagonist in a dystopian future. And you've seen that before, but this is so well executed that it's a fantastic read. I advise you to find trade paperback on this so you can catch up to what's going on. Next up is Low number 14. This is an awesome series about a future world where the sun has expanded and it makes the earth unhabitable. So mankind has to go literally underground to survive. Rick Remender is really killing it as the writer on this and the art by Greg Ticini looks fantastic. Next up is Descender number 12. This series is a space odyssey starring a boy robot named Tim 22. It's one of the most critically acclaimed comic books out there. As a matter of fact, the artist Dustin Wynn is nominated for Eisner for Best Multimedia Artist. He's using this watercolor style, which is giving the sender a very distinctive look. Next up is another critical favorite, Sex Criminals, which is going to its third volume in trade paperback form. Collected here are issues 11 through 15. It's the story of a man and woman that find out that they can stop time when they orgasm. So they decide to use this power to go rob banks. The premise sounds ludicrous, but it's very well done. Sex Criminals won the Eisner for Best New Series in 2015. Next up, let's see the offerings over at Titan Comics this week. And that starts with Vikings number two. This is a tie-in to the History Channel show. You got intrigue, betrayal, and badassery, the Viking way. Yes, badassery is a word. Next up, we have Tank Girl. Two girls, one tank, number two. This is part two of a four-part miniseries in which Tank Girl's tank has been stolen and she's trying to get it back. And hilarity ensues. If you are a fan of Harley Quinn or Deadpool, you should be reading Tank Girl too. It has a twisted sense of humor with plenty of debauchery in this. The character was created in 1988 and it made its first debut in comics in 1991. So it predates both Deadpool and Harley. Last but not least, over at Valiant Comics, we have Archer and Armstrong number four. I would describe this series as a odd couple buddy team road comedy. Valiant has some of the best writing in comics today. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday where I review all the new comic books for a new comic day. Be sure to follow my blog at comicpower.net. On social media, follow me at facebook.com forward slash comicpower.net and comicpower-universe.tumblr.com. And don't forget twitter.com forward slash comicpowersub. 
I also sell comics on eBay at this link. This is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye. And don't forget to share this video, click on subscribe, give it a thumbs up and tell everyone you know about this channel to help it grow. Thank you for your support.